Okay, and welcome to Nickthen Gaming's Unity Shooter course, where we are now in the sixth, uh, seventh video. We just finished with our bad guy controller, and we previously finished with our player controller. Now, we are actually going to work on our shot itself. So, let's go back to our Unity. This may take a while to update, especially if you uh, saved your files. Okay, so in our Assets Scripts, let's right-click, Create, C-Sharp Script, and I will call this the Shot Controller. And in my Shot Controller, let's double-click that to open it up. And this is very basic. Um, I just want a distance that it can travel in a max distance. You can even add a speed if you want. So here, let me write this. So private float speed equals one, distance equals zero, and a max distance equals 100. Now let me tell you what these things are. Uh, let's do a single one. So let's say speed is how fast this shot moves. I keep it at 1 so it does not change, but feel free to update it. Let's say distance is the maximum distance that this shot can travel and max distance, oh sorry, sorry, max distance is the maximum distance that the shot can travel. Distance is used to see if we have gone the max distance. Okay, let's equal that out. Do that. Okay, there we go. Now, we do not need the start method, so I will delete it. Uh, feel free to keep it there if you wish. Then we will uh, move the character. So move, uh, not move the character, but move the shot. So I'll say transform dot local position plus equals so it is added to vector three dot forward, which pretty much just moves it in a straight line and we'll multiply that by speed. So that's why if you increase speed to two, it will go twice as fast, speed to three, three times as fast, speed to 0.5f will go half as fast. So however you want. You can even randomize this if you want. So you can say random dot range of 0 0.5 to 1.5. Oh, F, 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 I am sorry. So you can do that if you want to randomize the shot speed, but I like to keep it at speed. I find that's fine. Um, then let's increase the distance moved. So we say distance plus plus. I guess this should be more of a time than a distance. But oh well. Then we say if the distance is greater than the max distance then we want to say distance equals zero and we want to turn off our parent transform dot parent dot game object dot set active is now false okay so turn off distance and let's say Turn off parent. Uh, no, not turn off distance, but reset distance. Okay, there we go. And actually, 
yeah, I won't change it since I already set it. Um, and that's all we need for the shot controller. So all of our scripting is done. That's great. So we can go here and start testing things out in our Unity. Um, but we do need a few things. So let's start to make our prefabs. Let's actually make some materials for them first. So I'm going to create a folder and I will name this resources. Inside of the resources folder, I will create a new folder called materials. Inside of our materials, I will create a new material, which I will name the shot material, I believe. Yes, let's just name it shot material. Let's duplicate this and the second shot one. Uh, let's make sure down here it says shot material one. Let's go here to rename and this will be the bad guy material. Okay. Now for the bad guy material, I want to make him a nice red. But I don't just want him red, I want him metallic and red. And so yeah, just turn up the metallic and that's just about it. For the shot, I will also make it metallic. But since our bad guy is red, we need to go with a nice safety green. Um, and that's it for our materials. In our resources folder, we also want to make a new folder called prefabs. And here is where we'll put our prefabs. Okay, so now we want to create our shot and we'll apply our material. But first, let's go here. Let's create a 3D object. And I want to make a sphere. In the sphere, I will call this the shot sphere. And I want to add a rigid body so it can touch things. I will turn off the gravity. I don't need to freeze positions or anything like that. Um, and let's also see what else do we want to add to the prefab. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Yeah, so we just want to add our shot script now. So I will click add component and type shot controller. There we go. But we do need one more thing. We need a shell for this. So I'll create empty and I will say shot shell. Shot shell, I will set it to zero, zero, zero. Shot sphere, I will set to zero, zero, zero. Then I'll drag shot sphere on shot shell. Make sure it's all as I want it to be. Oh yes, let's go into our mesh renderer to our uh, materials. Let's click on materials over here and I will drag the material. And now if we look at it, it's green just like we like. Um, there are many other materials that you can drag and drop instead of just using these basic materials and many things that you can do with it too, but I will not do anything of the sort. Um, so now that we have this, let's drag it down here to create a prefab with it. And then I'll delete this from the scene. Okay, and now we want to create the bad guy prefab. And for that we'll make another sphere, which we'll call the bad guy sphere. We'll go back to our materials and we'll drag the bad guy material onto the mesh renderer. And we also want to add the bad guy controller to the bad guy. Uh, yes, the speed is set. We don't actually need to set it here. Uh, not like we could if we wanted to. Uh, reset this to zero if it's not. And just like with the shot, we want to create an empty and we'll say bad guy holder uh, must be because I moved my camera or something or moved my screen 
So now the bad guy sphere is a child of the bad guy holder. Let's go to our prefabs and we will drag it down there and we'll delete the bad guy holder. And that's everything that we need for our bad guys and our shots. So next video we'll make a canvas to um, show our different screens and our UI and I believe we may get to drag and drop everything and play the game as well. So let's save it and thank you for watching.